Hello and welcome to the Terry Talks Nutrition Educational Webinar Series. Today's topic, Echinacea and Gustafolia for Anxiety. Our very special guest is Dr. Joseph Holler. Dr. Holler is uh, head of the Department of Behavioral Neurobiology at the Institute of Experimental Medicine in Budapest, Hungary. His primary research is in the neurobiology of behavior, and he's written three books and published over 150 articles in peer-reviewed journals on neurobiology as it relates to behavior with a special focus on stress, anxiety, and aggression. He has helped plan international research conferences aimed at educating people and professionals about medicinal plant compounds. And so I'm very delighted to be able to welcome you today. Hello, Dr. Haller. Hello. Nice to hear you. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from Hungary. It's amazing what technology can do. So we have a lot of questions today, so let's get started. So if you could start out by telling us about the Hungarian Academy of Sciences and a little bit about your research there. Okay, so this is a pretty old institute. It is about 200 years old, and it has about 20 research institutes all, all over the country. One of the leading institutes is the Institute of Experimental Medicine, where I am working. The profile of the institute is neurosciences, although it's a medical institute, but actually we are everybody there does neurosciences. Uh, originally, when I joined the institute, that was about 30 years ago, I was the only one who studied behavior, myself and my group. Today, I developed the unit for behavioral research for the whole institute, and everybody is joining us and doing behavioral research. Anxiety and stress are rather popular within the institute as research topics. Excellent. You know, part of your research has focused on using a compound for echin from echinacea, uh, and one of the best known uses of echinacea is for cold and flu season. It's for stimulating the immune system. Can you tell us what's the difference between the type of echinacea that's been used for millennia in medicine to help people with infections versus the type of echinacea extract that you're using for anxiety? Actually, the, the main difference is the alkamide composition. Alkamides are a group of substances which actually mediate the immune-stimulating effects of echinacea. That means that the same substance which is stimulating the immune system at the same time decreases anxiety. But actually it's not the same substance because there are a variety, about 20 different alkamides in, in echinacea, and some of them have these anxiolytic effects. So what happened was that uh, with seeing the similarity between alkamide and the endocannabinoid, endocannabinoid system, we asked ourselves whether these uh, substances which stimulate the immune system via the CB2 cannabinoid receptors may decrease anxiety via another very similar uh, receptor, the CB1 cannabinoid receptor. So this was how research uh, started. We tested the alkamide profile of a variety of uh, echinacea preparations, and in the end we got one which was pretty much different from the regular one, but at the same time showed some anxiolytic effects. In total, we tested about 20 different extracts coming from different regions of the world, coming from different species and different part, uh, plant parts. And out of those 20 which we tested, only one was uh, able to decrease anxiety. So this alchemide that you've tested from echinacea is more specific for the CB1 receptor in the brain and for alleviating anxiety, but does not stimulate the immune system to help you get over your colds and flu faster, correct? Uh, actually, we never tested uh, the immune stimulating effect. We tested only the effect on anxiety. So I would say that these alkamides 
do two things in the brain. First of all, they stimulate the CB1 cannabinoid receptor. That's, that's tested, and we have seen that. And the other thing is that they decrease the activity of an enzyme called FAC, fatty acid amyl hydrolase, uh, which degrades endocannabinoids in the brain. So uh, in parallel to stimulating the CB1 receptor, it blocks this enzyme, which results in an accumulation of the endocannabinoid, endocannabinoid uh, and endamide in the brain, the naturally produced endocannabinoid. In, ad in addition to the effect of alchemide. So it has two effects in the brain. So, yes, yeah, so this double effect is that not only does it supply additional uh, compounds from the plant that act on the CB1 receptor, but it also inhibits an enzyme that takes anandamide out of circulation. Therefore, more of this naturally occurring endogenous cannabinoid stays active in the brain longer. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And uh, it's not a different compound. Uh, alchemides, as I said, there are about 20 different types. Mm -hmm. And certain alchemides have effects on the CB1 receptor, and other, other alchemides have uh, effects on the, the enzyme I was speaking about. So this composition of different alchemides is the proper composition to, to do the, the two things together the stimulating of the receptor, and the inhibition of this enzyme. Excellent. So when you were working on the endocannabinoid system, um, when you were looking specific at these, at these receptors, um, can you tell us why, the importance of the receptors you were investigating? How does that play out in uh, human behavior and human health? Well, actually, we started this research at the end of the last century, when everybody was very enthusiastic about cannabinoids, because by that time the receptors were discovered, the metabolism was described, and the endocannabinoid, endocannabinoids were discovered. And in addition, in Belgium, a group produced the first uh, transgenic animals in which the CB1 receptor was knocked out. And actually, we were the first to publish a paper on anxiety by research made on this specific animal, this transgenic animal. And we discovered that uh, if we knock out the receptor, the animal becomes anxious. So the, the logical conclusion was that if we stimulate this receptor, anxiety decreases. And later on, we did quite a, quite many studies, and what we discovered was was that uh, cannabinoids not only decrease anxiety but change change the way in which uh, animals perceive the environment, diminish the stressfulness of aversive stimuli, and anxiety derives from this effect. The animal doesn't perceive uh, anxiogenic environmental information as being anxiogenic and uh, remains calm and non-anxious in stressful situations. This was, I think, our major discovery in, in this uh, area. So a lot of individuals that are listening today will have heard of cannabinoids and endocannabinoids and phytoplant cannabinoids in relationship to hemp because there's a lot of interest in hemp especially the cannabinoid CBD. So is the specific alchemide profile in echinacea, do you find that in other plants as well, or is it unique to echinacea? Uh, it's not only unique to echinacea, but it's uni uh, this specific alchemide composition is unique to this uh, preparation we are working with. Excellent. There are no alchemides of this type in other plants. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. So when we talk about this alchemide profile, your published work on this uh, works near the cannabinoid system to alleviate anxiety. So what kind of work did you do to determine that? I know you talked about knocking out the CB1 receptor in animal models and, and, the, and that the animals became quite anxious. Uh, were there other tests that you did prior to starting human research on this? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, as I said, one of my uh, interests in science is the study of anxiety. And actually, I was working for different pharmaceutical companies for decades. I was testing anxiolytics for them. I mean, anxiolytics developed in, in these pharmaceutical companies. And I was uh, making studies on, on anxiety, not, not, on, not necessarily on, uh, on uh, anxiolytics. And we had regular tests of anxiety in our lab. These tests are also used in, pharmace in the pharmaceutical industry, and it, they are used also in research. And we have tested the animals in these tests, and we have seen that uh, anxiety decreases. In addition, we made some molecular biological studies to see whether the, the alchemize bind to the CB1 receptor, and accidentally we discovered that it also decreases the activity of the enzyme FAG. We also did neurobiological studies in neuronal uh, preparations. I mean, these were not in animals. These were neurons uh, living in cell cultures. And we discovered that these compounds change certain uh, molecular events which are indicative of uh, an anxiolytic effect if the neuron was in an animal. And in addition, we also tested the pharmacokinetics of the, the compounds to be sure that these compounds remain in the body, uh, penetrate the brain, and so on and so forth. So there is a, a wide range of study we, we conducted. Many of it was uh, published. Many of our results were, were not published because, uh, well, you know, you don't want to, to share everything when one devel develops a new, new preparation. Absolutely. So um, we, we talked about the animal models, um, and so what specifically, you said that you found that in the animal models of anxiety that when you used, uh, when you used this special, unique echinacea preparation, that the uh, animals seemed less fearful or were better able to tolerate the stresses of their environment. How did you test that? Well, first of all, there, is, there are several uh, tests, like the elevated plasmids or the social interaction test, um, and many other uh, tests in the lab. We tested several. Uh, what one can do is to apply the test as it is, and the other thing is to stress the animal before he, is te he or is tested on the, uh, on the elevated plasmids or in the social interaction test. So if you stress it, then it enters the test let's say, nervous, stressed, and you see lots of anxiety, which is normal. Everybody gets anxious when, it's, uh, when it's, uh, uh, he or she is stressed. Now, when animals were treated with echinacea and then they were stressed, we couldn't see the effects of stress on these uh, anxiety tests. So now let's move on to the, the human clinical trials. So this is a um, a graph from one of the published human trials on this unique alchemite profile from echinacea. Can you tell us a little bit about the results in human studies? Were these individuals, did these individuals have regular everyday stress? Did they have above normal levels of stress to begin with? Were they diagnosed with a specific anxiety disorder? Tell us a little bit about this human study. Well, in total, we, we did four studies. Actually, only one was published so far. The other one is under publication. And these were people who led a regular life but had an anxiety problem. The anxiety problem was not as serious as to go to, the, to, to a physician, to see a physician, but still uh, it bothered them. So we uh, asked them the, to take this. Uh, preparation, and we, then we followed their anxiety uh, on a daily basis for about two weeks. And in the three weeks, in the, in the first week, uh, the treatment was on, and they stopped the treatment later on. So what we saw was that uh, the anxiolytic effect developed very, very quickly. Very quickly, meaning that uh, we could uh, see it after about three days, which is 
remarkably quick compared to many anxiolytics which one can find in the, the pharmacies because those develop their effects uh, within a couple of weeks. There is one uh, medication for anxiety, the benzodiazepine-like medication like Sanax, which is very quick. The effects of Sanax can be seen after one day. But Sanax uh, has unpleasant side effects because uh, it in induces dizziness, uh, motor incoordination, and it's very difficult to drive after taking Sanax and so on and so forth. So uh, that's quick, but it has serious side effects. The others don't have these very serious side effects, but are very slow. The anxiolytic effect develops very slowly. And if you imagine yourself in the, in the skin of an anxious uh, patient or somebody who has a problem with anxiety, then you can imagine that somebody who takes a medication and nothing happens for two weeks, and if the one is already anxious, he or she would become even more anxious because the effect is not occurring. Now, this is uh, kind of circumvented by this echinacea preparation because the effect is quick, within three days. It's not as quick as Sanax, but it's much quicker than all the rest of anxiolytics and has no side effects whatsoever. So in total now we have almost 200 uh, people in our studies and most of the side effects or so-called side effects occurred in the placebo uh, arm of the studies. Those who took echinacea very rarely had any, any, any problems, not related to the treatment, but in general. So it seems that uh, it's not even, it's not only that it doesn't induce uh, side effects, but it seems that patients feel better in general, unrelated to anxiety, feel better in general, uh, those who take this, this medication. I mean. Oh, so it sounds like it has more side benefits instead of side effects. Yeah, that, that, that's our feeling. It's okay. very difficult to prove this, but the, the, the fact that the placebo-treated patients always had more side effects than the echinacea-treated patients, suggests us that, that it's good to take this, this uh, preparation. So a lot of individuals are working with children who are unfortunately dealing with anxious feelings or anxieties or other types of issues that make them uncomfortable. If this should be botanical extract of alchemy profile from echinacea, is it safe to use in children? I can refer to studies made by others because uh, we did not do such studies, uh, but it's obvious that children above one year can take echinacea in general. And I have to mention here that the doses, doses for immunostimulation are much higher, approximately 10, 15, 20 times higher than the dose for anxiolysis. So if those high doses can be taken by, by uh, children about, uh, older than one year, then there is no reason to think that children uh, cannot take this anxiolytic. I would suggest that one-year-old children usually don't feel anxiety, or I think that they don't. Maybe from about four or five years, there won't be problems whatsoever. Excellent. Another group that uh, is often interested in finding uh, natural compounds to alleviate anxiety and distress are pet owners. So. Uh, have you heard anything about use in dogs, for example? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, most of our research was was done in animals. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if animals, uh, if in animals, uh, stress didn't induce anxiety, and we have seen a decrease in anxiety in various laboratory tests, then uh, yes, why not uh, pets? Pets are just any, just uh, animal, just like our uh, study subject. So, I think that it would be good for 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 uh, the pets to to take this if if they have problems with stress, with anxiety, and things like that. You know, another question that folks might be interested in is the effect on the immune system. Now, you said that this does not uh, have the the kind of immune stimulating effects of taking high dose echinacea. Do you have any concerns with people using this if they have an autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis or something along those lines? 
I would say that they shouldn't take this uh, this product. I mean, this echinacea extract. One can never be sure about side effects in in these uh, in the case of these patients. So I would say that uh, caution is is better than than. Uh, Problems which may occur. I won't suggest that they uh, the, that they should should take the this echinacea preparation. So in that instance, since it's not been tested specifically in that group, they should discuss it with their doctor. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Are you aware of any drug interactions of using these compounds from echinacea with people who are already taking prescription medications for anxiety and or depression? No, no. There, there are lots of studies uh, testing for drug interactions with with echinacea, and the results are very positive. Mm -hmm. I would say that uh, drug interactions are not a real concern with with this preparation. So it sounds like you're still um, actively engaged in research and planning studies and executing studies around this unique alchemide profile from echinacea. So are you able to share with us some of the uh, interesting areas you wish to pursue in the future? Yeah, actually, we are in the midst of a new study where we combined echinacea with another plant extract. I won't say which one. And what uh, the, the reason is not the, the increasing of the effect, but actually the widening of the effect. We have tested this compound with, uh, in patients with anxiety disorder, so these people didn't simply have a problem with anxiety or occasional anxiety, but they had an anxiety disorder diagnosed in the clinic. And in these people, uh, the effect of echinacea developed, but it took about four weeks which is pretty pretty long. I mean, it's about the the delay what one sees with other other anxiolytics, and it seems that by adding another uh, plant extract, first of all, this time can be decreased. I mean, this delay in the development of anxiolytic effect in patients with anxiety disorder, and the other thing was that the effect was particularly long lasting. Uh, one has to take with this echinacea preparation tablets in the morning and in the evening, but with the new pre preparation, one can see the effect for 24 hours. So one can imagine that uh, once we are ready, we would have a preparation which would uh, extend the anxiolytic effect of echinacea uh, to 24 hours, and then it would be sufficient to take it in the evening and then the, the next evening, the next time. That would be an enormous benefit because there's many studies that have shown that the more times an individual has to take a dose of, of a supplement, the less likely they are to take all of their doses. They always forget one or miss one, and then their benefits are diminished. So excellent to have a, a, a tablet that will last 24 hours. Yeah, and there is another uh, preparation, a plant extract too, which is extremely good for anxiety. But the problem with it is that you have to take it five times a day. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem for everybody because we are going to work in the morning and reach home in the evening and have all kinds of trouble during the day. And if you have to take to go out and take another pill and another pill, that, that's a problem. So decreasing the number of uh, pills to be taken, I think that's, that's important. Oh, excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy day, or perhaps in Hungary it's evening. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us about this unique alchemide preparation of echinacea that works on the cannabinoid receptors in the brain to alleviate anxiety. I hope you come back and join us again when you have your new research, and we can talk more about that. It, it, was, it was my pleasure. Thank you for calling me. All right. Thank you. And folks, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit your questions about echinacea and anxiety on the Terry Talks Nutrition website. You can find that website at terrytalksnutrition.com. 
Just use the drop-down list from Terry Connects, and there will be um, a selection that you can make called Just Ask Terry. Feel free to submit your questions, and we will make sure and get answers back to you. This has been um, an educational webinar presented by Terry Talks Nutrition. If you would like to learn more about natural health, feel free to sign up for a free weekly newsletter at the Terry Talks Nutrition website. They are very scrupulous about not sharing emails, uh, so when you sign up with them, you will only receive the weekly newsletter from Terry Talks Nutrition. At that website, you can also listen to recordings of past seminars, and again, you have the drop-down list from where you can ask Terry your personal questions. We also have a YouTube channel where you can replay these webinars. This webinar uh, has been uploaded to YouTube, and so have dozens of others on topics of which you might find great interest. So please visit our YouTube channel, and that is Terry Talks Nutrition. Just go to the YouTube search box, Terry Talks Nutrition. It will bring up the channel and the list of all of the different webinars that you can view. Thank you so much for your kind attention, and until we meet again, good health to you. Bye-bye.